Hello, my name is Shanika Hampton and thank you for viewing my hip hinge corrections video for the ATRN 7240 course um, for the Doctor of Athletic Training program at AT Steele University. Um, if you guys take a look at the previous video that is noted in the top right corner of the screen, um, you'll be able to get a full assessment of my subject's posture and um, some of the breathing patterns of the same patient. Um, as noted in that previous video, um, the subject you can see displays a normal cervical posture um, with an angle of 90 degrees of flexion and just a little bit of minimal kyphosis or rounding of the shoulders um, in the upper back. So you can see that in the top left picture on the screen. What is more apparent is the lordotic curve or that mild sway back, which is kind of secondary to the anterior tilt of the pelvis. Um, all of this may be indicative of a slightly weaker core musculature or maybe some neuromuscular control issues of the lumbopelvic complex. Um, as you can also see through the basketball shorts on the picture on the left, that there is a mild diminish in the gluteal tone. This is also noted in the previous video that was also seen. So um, we can also look at this particular portion and note that the patient has some gluteal weakness and a little bit of hamstring bulk and tightness that we'll be able to see later on in this assessment video. So again, what we're gonna be looking at is how to instruct the hip hinge position and how to make some mild corrections given some corrective exercises and uh, secondary to some assessments. So let's check that out. Do I have your permission to share this video in my online DAC course for corrective techniques for movement dysfunction? Yes. Okay. All right, so today we're gonna to be looking at some of the difficulties with the hip hinge movement um, this hip hinge movement is seen in a lot of exercises all the way from good mornings, RDLs, deadlifts, um, and different things to actually help strengthen the core, lower extremity, and improve function. Um, so what I'm going to do to start off today is actually do a dry assessment of hamstring tightness. Um, this would mimic the FMS testing for the straight leg raise. So if I can have you lay straight back and Just going to take his leg nice and relaxed here. He's just getting dead plate thanks. And we're going to push back until you start to see that hamstring start to close back. Um, so, right here is about where I am actually starting to see the hamstring start to get extremely tight. And we'll just set this on the other side. There may be some possibilities that there's some differencing in functioning once we get to that part. Okay, so now that we've observed the hamstring tightness um, bilaterally, I do want to go into a quadruped position um, where the patient is on all fours. Um, and we're actually going to place a dowel on the subject's back to try to see if there is um, neutral spinal alignment and to see if there is a, um, any shifting in any of the positioning that is going on there. So, um, if you can do me a favor, if you can actually flip over and get into what we call a quadruped position where you're on all fours, with hands flat, and then knees hit just like you have it. Um, we're gonna borrow this lovely dowel here. And before I actually give you the dowel, I actually want you to try to do a couple of, you find it. Back, like you're trying to sit your butt onto your heel and just to rock back. 
for him to breathe through those same four motions, holding that same position while breathing, you could possibly see a little bit more of a better position. Okay, and as he's doing that, I am gonna add this dowel rod to the picture, so that way we can elicit having a neutral spine Um, so what I want you to do is I want you to try to lift your head into a position to where that is touching that pole. And as you're ready, you kind of bring your head down just in perfect right there. All right, so this would be this subject's neutral position. And I want you to try to repeat those same four leg shifts back onto your heels one more time, trying to keep your spine in line. And before you even get all the way to your heels, already notice that there is a loss in that uh, posture with that. There we go. So it's getting a little bit better. Um, again, the kyphotic spine just does provide a little bit of a uh, hinge or disruption there where we're trying to actually keep those things in line. So there will be some things to correct there as we're moving forward and we'll look at that in the next position. All right, so now we're gonna have you perform what we call the SFMA, uh, multi-segmental movement flexion test. Um, if you can actually take a couple of steps away back from the table, um, you're going to just normally, like you would, no cues or anything, just bend forward to touch your toes, nice and slow. Okay, so holding that position, um, as you can see, again, the subject has, again, that rounded kyphotic posture. Um, we are able to kind of see that the hamstrings are extremely tight, and there is a little bit of that flattening of the low back. Um, so, sir, is this actually bothering you? Is this painful to do yeah. this motion? Okay. So we would exhibit this as a painful dysfunctional movement. Um, so we would seek to put him in positions that are not painful, but that actually correct the motion. So again, now that we again determined that there may be some possible dysfunctional movement, especially from that SFMA screen, uh, we do want to see the patient in an actual hip hinge position. So what the patient is going to do is take the dowel rod that is in his hand. He's going to position that on his back so that the one hand that is high above is supported and keeping the dowel touching the head, and the other hand is positioned where it's keeping the dowel rod in contact with the thoracic spine and in the lumbar spine. Um, from here, the subject is actually going to bend slightly forward, just enough to the, to the point where he starts to feel himself lose contact with the dowel rod, and that is gonna be in a squatting position. So if I can have you stand back up straight, for just a moment and you're going to try to sit back into a squat position and you're going to try that and stay in that position just before you start to feel the dowel lose contact with your back okay and come up and you're going to try to sit back into that squat a little bit more and do that four times for me okay. um, so as we can see um, it's not a lot of low movement to get that patient back into that hip hinge spot so what we're going to try to do with these other exercises is actually open up and train that hip hinge to be performed in a uh, motion that's a little bit better. And excuse the ice machine in the background. All right, one last assessment that I wanted to check on that is uh, primitive in the hip hinge mo motion, excuse me, is going to be just a general overhead squat. Um, with no weight, no anything overhead, just the patient actually putting his hands in the air and squatting down into a deep squat position like he may be used to. So if you can just do one good squat for me. Good, and come straight up. Okay, and we're going to do that four more times. put your hands down. Um, so as you may have noted during that uh, squat test, you can see 
that the person actually does have a good form. Um, he actually does start to actually stick the butt out, but not so much to the point where there is an excessive or dotted curve. So there may be some differences in how he actually completes the movement. You may see a reorganization of the sensory motor system as it is recruiting different muscles to complete the same action. Um, I would note that um, as there was some anterior translation of the knees as they were um, about to go over the toes, you never actually saw the knees peek forward over the toes. So overall has a very good posture in that, but we do want to try to correct the painful dysfunction in the forward hip flexion. All right, so now that we uh, demonstrated that there were some few issues with the hip hinge, we're going to try to correct that some more with a couple more different exercises using the dowel. Um, the dowel is a good tool to, again, maintain spinal alignment. So let's see how the subject does with the next exercise, which is going to be a half kneeling um, position here. So um, with the um, patient in a lunge position, you want him to be flexed in what we call a 90-90 um, flexion. So flexion, 90 degrees of flexion of the knee, 90 degrees of flexion of the hip, and the same for the back leg to support. Um, again, we want that dowel in contact with the head, the thoracic spine, and the lumbar spine so we can keep that neutral position. And I want the subject to actually try to do a couple more slight bends forward, just like we did with the hip hinge, but just enough to see if we stay in contact. And actually, you can come back up straight. You're actually going to bend your torso forward as if you were trying to do that same type of squat maneuver. There you go. Perfect, and then come back up. And again, you're only bending just until you start to feel that dowel rod lose contact with you. Okay. And try to see if you can push through a little bit further. Good. And two more on these last two. If you remember that abdominal bracing position where you keep that nice, strong, tight core, try to engage yourself in that on the way down. There you go, hold it, and good, and come back up. Um, so that would be one example of a progression. And um, if we actually have the patient move into what we call a tall kneeling position, where the patient is not, no longer in that 90-90 flex, he's actually on both knees um, with the torso, spine, head, neutral, all in alignment, we'll put that dowel in the same position Good job, he's getting a nice shoulder stretch there. And we're just going to have the patient actually try to sit back onto the heels from this position to try to see if we can keep that spine in neutral alignment and come back up straight. That's it, so try to get that forward bend nice, tight and strong and then sit back onto the heels. Good, and come back. So with these last three repetitions of this, we want these to actually be one fluid movement that's happening at the same time. So we'd actually like the patient to try to sit back on the heels as well as bend forward all in one motion. Good. Come back up and one last one. Good. So again, these are all motions that would be mimicking the hip hinge and actually further opening and training that space. All right. The last uh, motion that we're going to do is actually removing the dowel away, um, but actually try to get into some actual squatting motions and try to see if we can get the patient to engage while he is remembering those movements from the dowel rod. So we are going to use that stool we have. Good. And so before the patient does anything, um, I want to give some small instruction. So we're going to have the patient actually take about one big step away from the seat. Good. Um, so the patient is actually going to be getting into a squat position just as if he were going to sit down on the seat, but he's just going to barely touch and then come straight back up. And that was a good look back to try to make sure you're in the correct spot so that you don't end up falling on that. So hopefully we have a good performance of this one as we go through. Um, so you're going to find your comfortable space, nice tight core. Remember that positioning from the dowel rod being behind you and try to keep your head 
torso and lumbar spine in one good um, straight line as you try to squat and touch. Okay. Okay, and you're probably going to take one step back, a little bit of half step. There you go. All right, try that again. Okay. And you can see the subject trying to engage that core and that posture to keep that positioning. And the back is actually not as flat anymore. It does have that little bit of an arching, which is what we are looking for. And he is translating backward a lot better. Okay, good. And then now we'll transition here. You can progress that by actually adding some weight. Um, you can actually move the seat down lower and have the patient try to get down as low as possible into the squat. So all those things can be progressed in a manner that allows for that hip hinge to be perfected a little bit better. All right, one last exercise um, that we're gonna do is called a single leg deadlift. Uh, we're gonna do this with a dumbbell. Okay, so instead of doing that double leg hip hinge squat position that you guys just saw, um, the subject is going to have, st or to stand on one leg for me, whichever one that he chooses, and the dumbbell is going to be in the opposite hand. He is going to keep that same position in that neutral spine and try to balance forward. So whenever you're ready, try to reach down as far as you can. Okay, come back up. Okay, so remember that hip hinge position and try four more and if you need to um, put your foot down to retouch just to regret center yourself you can do that okay try that again okay looking at the patient's low back we still do see a little bit more flattening in this position which kind of demonstrates he may not be all the way ready for this progression but this would be again an advanced motion that would involve um, training the patient for the hip hinge. Thank you.